So when we say capture devices, we are talking about video and audio capture from the scenes that we, we are planning to monitor or to uh, keep it safe, to, to have eyes on the installation. So initially we will talk about video and we will talk about the different types of cameras that we have uh, in the market to solve or to fulfill the project needs in each type of scenario. Okay, initially we have the box camera. The box camera, it's, um, it's a relative old camera. It's like uh, some legacy device that we may see in, in, uh, in some installations. So basically we have, uh, it's really like a box, like a square. And inside we have all the, the, the recording mechanism in, in this uh, in this in in this square here in this box and we have uh, uh, this front part here the sensor exposed the sensor that will capture this image and transform in um, uh, it digitally and to be transmitted to the to the NVR so in this type of camera this box cameras we have the option to add lens so we can uh, Attached lens can be fixed lens, can be um, MFZ lens, so multifocal lens that you can uh, zoom in a uh, in a specific uh, level. When we have the motorized focal zoom as well, so uh, this type of lens has normally a, a cable here that you connect in the side of this camera to control the the lens, and in the back here we have the the cables, if it's like an analog camera, you know, the coax cable, the auxiliary power supply cable, sometimes we have an alarm input, alarm output, or the Ethernet cable, if it's uh, an IP camera, okay? This type of camera, normally, when installed indoors, we have a, a bracket here, like uh, something like that, that will be installed in the wall or in the ceiling. So this is a very traditional type of camera that we see in the you know, cartoons or anything like that that represent a, a CCTV camera. Uh, this camera, uh, normally, uh, if it's installed outside, outdoors, we have an enclosure that is like a, a big structure, a metal structure with, with a plate here in the top and then you now with a glass here in the front and with the bracket that you protect the camera, uh, you know, from, from rain and, and sun, etc. So this is a very uh, old type of camera. Normally we don't see these in new installations, but we may see this type of cameras or even need to replace this type of cameras. Okay. The next camera that is similar to the box one, that is the bullet camera. Bullet. So the bullet camera, basically we, it, it comes with this um, part that you fix in the wall or in the, in the ceiling. And it's very similar to the to the box camera with the lens already uh, embedded in this uh, structure and normally it's already uh, created with a uh, material that will be able to handle rain and sun etc and, and uh, have some classifications like IP66, IP67 as we saw in other classes. Okay, I have one here to show to you this is a type of uh, of a box of, of a bullet camera so in this part we will install in the wall or in the ceiling we have uh, a flexibility to adjust the angle and then we can adjust the correct position okay then we have the lens here and we have the cables in the other part okay. so this is the bullet camera the next one is very traditional one the dome camera 
dome camera because it's basically it's a rounded camera with a with a dome uh, that it's made from acrylic or in other materials and especially for when we have like a IK10 rating the one that uh, will be able to um, um, support um, a hammer trying to smash this camera the anti-vandalism camera it will uh, it will be made from you know stronger materials so this dome camera we have this uh, plastic dome here and uh, the lens and all the, the, the sensor and all the mechanisms inside here so dome camera is something like this so we have this plastic bubble and the lens here and all the, the circuits inside and we have all the cables okay in the dome part we have a another subtype which is microdome a microdome it's basically the same thing as a as a dome but we have a, a very tiny dome in a specific area here so it's like a, a round structure um, a round base and a small bubble in one of the sides and looks like this so you have this uh, structure here uh, protected and just this tiny part that we have the the dome and the lens that you can adjust angle depending if you're installing the in the in the ceiling in the in the wall or etc okay uh next the the next one is called ball cameras or turret depending on the on the region or who calls it but basically it's it's really a ball uh, structure and then we have uh, an external part that keeps this round structure fixed so you can adjust here the angle and then you can screw uh, here um, the the fixing screw to make everything uh, tied and fix it in the correct position okay, so one of the type of ball camera so here I'm not sure if it's yeah it's very have this screw here but this is like a, a round a, like a, a really a ball structure and I have this part that will uh, make it fix it static in the correct position this is the ball camera ball camera after this ball camera we'll talk about a very let's put like this and, uh, something like that yeah it's not very good drawing <laughs> but it's called the PTZ, the PTZ camera. So the PTZ camera is the cameras that you see moving around in any direction and doing the zoom and etc. So uh, this type of camera is normally very expensive because we have uh, motors that will uh, be able to move around this heavy structure, you know, uh, having the pan, the movement pan, this horizontal one, the tilt, the vertical one and the zoom so we have the zoom the lens doing the the zooming uh, action as well so a ptz looks like this so this is the ptz here here it's moving in the in the in the pen axis here's in the tilt so do the tilt and then the zoom inside it you do the zoom in the lens normally it's installed like this right so so this is another type of camera uh, this is normally installed in in areas that we have an act, actual and active monitoring happening so the monitoring uh, staff 
can uh, try to you know, to look or find suspicious activities and 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 follow targets and and you know to really it's more like a, an active way to to monitor and not just leave to a specific scene this type of camera has a several type of uh, tasks or um, working uh, modes now, for example it can do auto scan can um, stay, stay static static can stay static and if a, an object uh, appears or if a person appears it will automatically zoom in the person it will follow until it leaves the scene so we have several different type of modes in this type of camera of course it depends from the manufacturer in the model as well okay and then we have the fisheye fisheye camera normally it's around the structure here as well a little dome just like the microdome camera fisheye and we have the sensor here in the middle this is the fisheye camera so we have this round structure the little dome here and the lens inside of this dome so this fisheye camera we have the 360 view the 360 degrees view and it will depending on the software that you have this camera you'll be able to de-warp this image and and act like a ptz like a eptz a digital ptz so 360 degrees and uh, this type of uh, of cameras is, is very useful to install in a specific height and and you, you can cover you know a very good amount of uh, of of the scene of the scene that you need to to monitor And this camera is used when we need to cover um, a good area, like a, a, a hall or uh, some entrance, or you know, like a, a room that you can cover all the angles, and you can record everything in the same at the same time. Because it will be the difference from the PTZ. When you have the PTZ, you can move around the PTZ, but you're losing the information of your scene. In the, uh, in the region that you are not focusing in that moment. So in the fisheye, you are recording the 360 degrees view at the same time. But the downside is we have the sensor here and the sensor uh, has a specific resolution. And you, you are dividing all the resolution in this 360 uh, degrees view. And, and this leaves us with specific areas on this image with low resolution or with a lower resolution than it is supposed to be uh, as you buy a camera like hating like a 5 megapixel or 8 megapixel camera you will not have an 8 megapixel like an a square that we have normally in the other sensors because as we are we are creating like a 360 uh, degrees view and and merging in a in a like a square format or like a round format we will uh, lose in, in the edges a little bit of resolution. Okay, so if you install uh, like this camera in the ceiling, uh, we ha you have this camera here, for example, and here's the ground, here's the ceiling. So if you have a person here, you need to be in the highest resolution possible for the camera. But if you have a person like, like here, this area, start to have a very lower resolution and this other as well you know so if you need to to get more information uh face recognition license plate recognition or something like that not not a lpr of course but you, you need to recognize a, a license plate by looking on it and um, it will be very difficult in these areas of the fisheye and this uh this situation um, can be uh, and we have a, a specific type of camera that can handle this type of situations that you can have the full 
resolution per area that we are looking for, which is the multi sensor. Uh -huh. It, it varies, you know, the, the structure can be um, uh, 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 like a big bullet with two screens, can, uh, with two glasses, can be like a round one with a camera on each side, it varies, but this will be the multi-sensor camera. So this multi-sensor camera means that you have more than one image sensor capturing the scene. And this is very helpful because, uh, for example, let's assume the PTZ. We have some manufacturers that created a PTZ. So we have it in the base here in the lower area, the PTZ that actually do the same you know, PTZ commands that we know. And in the top here, we have four different uh, static cameras, like a, a dome or, or something like that, and that you cover that sector every time you know 24 by 72 stay looking on it and and recording full resolution there so even that you're moving around with the ptc we are not losing any information around this camera and this multi-sensor basically do this it will combine so uh, i will put here um, for example let's assume that it's uh, this way here that we have two sensors and it's capturing here and then it, this one is captured here. So let's assume this one is, is getting this part and that is this part. The camera inside here, it will get a full picture. It will get a full picture. It will combine the two images in just one. And let's assume that we are talking about a four megapixel for each sensor. It will it really have the full four megapixel for this sector here and then it to combine. So if you zoom in in this area, it will not divide the resolution for all the area like we divide in the fisheye. Okay, and then we have next type of cameras. We have, I'll put here a different thing here. Thermal cameras. These type of cameras are used in specific scenarios, specific environments. Uh, it's, it's not cheap, it's an expensive camera. Some regions, some uh, countries have a restriction to import this type of camera. Uh, but it basically will uh, detect the thermal um, signature of the target and you'll be able to uh, to be able to to do like a perimeter protection or any other um, application so for example if you have um, a perimeter in a in a in an area that you have uh, like a florist or too many trees around the, f the fence or um, a, a region that it, it's a very complex scenario that you cannot distinguish distinguish if it's a, a person or uh, or the the environment or the, of the scene the thermal camera will be able to detect if it's a person shape in in the in the middle of the trees for example um, or if it's uh it's, if it's too uh the area is too or if it's a wider area that you cannot uh, have irs or light everywhere the thermal will be able to detect the temperature in a, in a good range that will depend, of course, of the model. So in a specific scenarios, it will be a very good solution. But again, it's very expensive and, um, and, it's, very, and, it's, and it's very focused for specific projects. And the last one, it's, um, it's similar to To the others here but i will put as a, a, a different type which is the the explosion proof cameras 
the most common type of an explosion camera um, are, are bullets and, um, and PTZs. So, but it's not like a standard PTZ. It's a different shape of PTZ as you know, all this structure will require uh, the, the mechanism that will not trigger an explosion. So it's a, a different type of camera that it, again is specific for a, uh, um, uh, a scenario that will require this type of application. Okay, so these will be the cameras that will capture the, the video. And we'll have uh, another component in this capture part that is mountings in brackets. So mountings and brackets. Um, we have the cameras. So for example, we have this camera here. We have this camera here that we have these three holes here that you probably will install in a in a wall or in a, in the ceiling, and that's and that's okay, right? So you can just install here, and that's and that and that's it. But not necessarily because you have all this part of the cable that you need to protect. So if you are installing a brick wall, for example, and it's not like a drywall that you can pass through this all this part of the cable, and then install the camera. Uh, we have these mountings that you can, uh, you know, put this cable there in this little box and then install the camera on top of this mounting and then the camera will be fixed and then we'll have its own cable uh, safe as well. We have different types of mountings. We have, um, uh, so we'll just put here like a, a standard mounting we have a hole here to to pass the cable and we have several type of uh, installation patterns to to be able to handle more more type of cameras and then we have in the other side here that will be the surface and and then we have other holes here in the other side to install in their surface okay so this is like a uh, uh, a, uh, a junction box, we have junction box, uh, mountings, we have um, a ceiling mount, so if it's like a, a drywall a ceiling that you can have like a, a hole here and install specific cameras that it will be able to, to, uh, to, to show only the dome here in, in this part and, and have the other part of the camera inside the ceiling and we have some some uh, parts that will make it fix it there we have for ptz's we have extenders to 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 be able to to have the camera uh, next to the scene that it needs to protect you know if it's like uh, some uh, big supermarkets you know that we have a very high ceiling uh, you can have this type of uh, um, you know, extenders and, and mountings. We have the pole mounting. So we have a pole here. Normally it's a mounting here with two parts that will fix in the mounting and then we can install the camera. We have corner mountings. So in, in the corner it's a uh, you, you fix the structure first and then it will have uh, another part to, to you to place the camera. So again, it's have several type of mounting brackets and, brackets and, and junction box to adapt the camera to the, to, for what you need in your project. But one thing that is very important is to choose the correct uh, adapter or mountings that your manufacturer recommend, because for example, if it's an IP66 camera, uh, IK10, anti-vandalism camera, you will not use any mounting or, or junction box, right? Uh, we have a very cheap ones made of plastic, so if you do, if you go with the hammer and try to uh, destroy the camera, to destroy the bracket, and the, the camera normally is installed on top of the of this uh, mounting, for example. So 
it will destroy the, the mounting and the cable will be exposed so the, the burglar can you know, cut the cable and, and, uh, and you lose this camera. So, so it's very important to choose the correct one for your specific installation. Some of the installations will require specific junction box or mountings um, to, to be uh, certified as an IP66 installation as well. All right, so we, we talk about the camera parts, now let's talk about audio. So we have basically two ways to, to record audio and, and let's just initially try to understand why we are recording audio. So depending on, on, on your project needs, we need to record audio to, to really register what is being uh, discussed in the area. So if normally if it's like a, a cashier or um, an area that will require you to uh, record all the transaction, what is happening, etc. But of course, this needs to be legal in the country or in the region that we are applying this type of projects. Uh, but we have other type of needs as well. We have audio detections, uh, audio analytics, that you can identify some, some type of uh, noises in the capture audio and trigger some alarms. So for example, uh, a gunshot detection. Uh, we have some cameras that can uh, detect this type of uh, specific noise. So when you have an embedded microphone, you'll be able to capture this type of noise and trigger an event to the monitoring system. We have a crowd detection um, that when it start to, you know, the, the background noise start to be higher, higher, higher until a threshold it to trigger an event. So we have different ways to use audio. It's not necessarily only to record conversations. So the first one is the embedded in the camera. So I will create here a camera and I'll put here this dot that will be the microphone. So I have here a camera that you guys will, will be able to see these three little dots here that these three little, little dots is the microphone. So this camera has an embedded microphone and it will be able to, to, um, to stream with the video stream to the NVR the audio. So the embedded is one of the, of the options. The second one is the camera put here just a an external microphone so we have a few cameras that we have the alarm input and output but we have the audio input and output as well and this type of applications we can uh, add external microphones uh, that you can place anywhere in the scene and it will record and will stream with the video stream of this camera. So that's very useful as well. And the third one is the is the external uh, microphone connected directly to the NVR. In this type of installation, the audio line will go in parallel with the Ethernet cable or the coax cable, and it will record directly in the NVR. So some NVRs, we have uh, specific inputs that it will be able to record the, the audio with that channel that is uh, associated with. So it's another way to, to capture the audio information. Okay, in the, in the last part of the capture, let's talk about cables. 
So cables we have um, Cat 5B, Cat 6. That will be the most used type of cables for IP or for uh, coax with balloons. So what is balloons? Balloons is a um, is a, a device that will will be able to use one of the pairs of the Ethernet cable and transmit the same information that we were transmitting in the coax cable. Uh, but normally we use you know Ethernet cables for the IP cameras, and we have the coax cable. Coax cable for analog or high quality analog cameras. This high quality analog, we can, uh, we have different ways to call it, but it's basically cameras that it will, will be able to uh, have more quality using the, the coax cable, using the uh, you know, legacy installations, the analog installations. So you see now, now in the market uh, cameras like two, four or even eight megapixel cameras via coax cable uh, and, and basically using the same uh, connections that we had with the very old analog camera. So this is a, a very old analog camera and then you see here the the connection type so this is the coax connection and this will be the very old <laughs> coax cable as well but this is the balloon we have here the part that we will connect we'll connect the the, the, the pair the pair of the ethernet cable and in this other part will be the, the one that we will connect in the camera or in the in the in the NVR in the DVR in the the back of the DVR so it will match here and then you'll be able to install this way okay so that's cover our capture part uh, so all devices that will capture the information from the scene, the video, the audio, and will send this to the NVR or not. So we will see you now in the next part.